Hi, so we've been doing loads of work on this bit of a wind turbine. That's only one bit of the wind turbine. This bit is responsible for capturing the wind and making that turn. That's its purpose. But of course anything really will do that. I mean a tea towel will flap in the breeze. It's about doing that efficiently and that's what all of this stuff is about. All the design work that goes in these various turbines are all about capturing as much as you can and making sure that it can turn that bit there. But then there's a big question, isn't there? What do you do after that? Because having that turn is awesome stuff, but of course we want to generate from it. And that's a problem in itself. We need to be able to match this bit with this bit so we can actually make it turn. Now I've got three motors here. I've got this one, which is pretty hard to turn actually, it's pretty tough. This one, which is from a PC fan, it's a piece of cake to turn that. And then we've got this one, which is from a washing machine, and that's kind of medium, actually. Now, when I put wind on this, this will turn reasonably well. And so we can put that right there on the axle. Now, when we put something on the axle like that, it's called an axial arrangement. And this is a mid one. So we've got mid turn, hard turn, easy turn. A bit like Goldilocks, isn't it? Now, if I connect that up, and turn on my wind, we'll get that LED to light. This one here. And there it is glowing away. The problem is, of course, we don't often have the ideal motor. Quite often you have a different kind of motor, like this one, for instance, which is much tougher to turn. Now we can turn this if we use gearing. So remember, the further from the center you get, the faster it will turn, but the less torque, less turning force it can apply. So here we've got a large gear, and here we've got a small gear. So we can apply the turning force to here, and this will need little at the edge and a lot at the center, so that we can use that gearing ratio of small gear to big gear to turn something that it would otherwise be a bit tough to turn. And if we do that, There we go! <laughs> we can get that to output power. Now remember you give up speed when you want more turning force. There's a relationship between speed and torque. The faster it is, the less torque. The more torque it is, the slower. So when you have something that's really quite torquey, you want a big gear on your motor and a little gear on your axle, and you can still get that thing to turn and output the power in order to do something. But of course the reverse is true. Now if you remember, Simon Platten gave us a drone motor, and I've got this PC fan motor. If I were to spin this, I'd get next to nothing out of it. I need to spin this quickly. To spin this quickly, I use a ridiculously large gear, against a really small gear. Now this will spin very quickly because the gear is so large. And if we pop that gear plate on, <laughs> and again we can get our LED to light. Oops. Sorry about that. Okay, so there is a relationship between the size of the cog that we use and the motor that we want to turn. If we have a medium motor, we can put it straight on the axle. If you have one that needs a lot of speed, well, we can just use a large cog. If we need one that needs a lot of turning, well, we can use a large cog on the motor and a small cog on the actual axle here. All of those will transmit the power of that axle into the motor and get the motor turning. Now there are reasons why motors are built like that, because obviously people want motors for different things. We need a high torque motor, for instance, for starting the car. We need a low torque motor for running a fan. So motors can come in different varieties just because of the jobs they need to do. And if we want to use them for a wind turbine, we need to pay attention to where they came from and what it was that they were doing at the time. So that this section here, can be married to the motor so that the output can be taken in the way that the motor needs in order to be a generator. And there's loads of ways we can do that. 
and we just pointed out a few. I mean, these cogs are awesome. I make them from timing belts, remember, and I did that video 1084 showing you how to make those cogs. But you don't need to use cogs, you could use chains and um, chain wheels, you could use pulleys, you could use friction, you could just do it directly as I just did. So there's lots of ways we can actually make that together. Now it works particularly well for the rose because the rose creates this sort of blank space behind it because of this big shield and so we can put anything we like there. That's not so efficient when it comes to uh, a turbine that's got fan blades because if we stick a massive cog like that on the back of a fan blade turbine, we're creating a lot of resistance. But equally, we could do the same thing with a VAWT because they're upright and all the mechanisms down below. So for the rows and VAWT, you can use a much wider range of motors. If you want to do it on a fan, you're going to have to get some arrangement to take that power down so that you can hide this section of it. And of course, you can use ropes and pulleys to do that. But with these kind of turbines, it's much easier to do that. So as I said, the main issue is matching your motor and its connection to the turbine so that the input from the turbine to the motor matches what the motor needs in order to be a generator. In which case you're pretty much going to get the same output. When you use a high torque motor it will turn slowly. When you use a low torque motor with a gear it'll turn quickly. So you'll get high amps, low volts, or low amps, high volts, and of course power is volts times amps, watts rather is volts times amps, so the power will remain pretty much the same, it's just how it's fed out will be different in terms of volts and amps depending on the type of motor that you use. Anyway, I thought I'd go into that a little bit more because we're actually going to start doing this stuff now we've settled on this design. And as you know, I'm a fan of rim design and that's pretty much the same thing what this cog is. This cog is really just taking off the power at the rim. And I'm probably going to do something along those lines on the large scale rose turbine because that's what I'm a fan of. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to subscribe.